Hello, thank you for joining me. Good morning from a very, very cold Riga. It's minus seven, like an ice rink where I am. And we are just going to the main railway station. We're catching a train today to Segalda. I've been told it's a nice town, about an hour from here. There's a castle there, there's a cable car there. So it should be quite an interesting place. There we go. There's the main railway station. Very sort of um, Soviet looking. And I believe that red writing up there says Latvian Railways. So it's going to be my first experience off the Latvian Railways. I've travelled on the trams here in Riga, not yet been on one of their trains. So let's go and have a look, see what we're going to find. Just bought my ticket, just getting myself coffee. I love these coffee machines. They're all like a Euro or Euro 20. And there's my coffee being made for me. I find it quite amusing at the end. It just sort of drops a stick in for you to stir it when it's finished. So we're going to, when I've got this coffee, I'm not sure if there's going to be any catering on the trains. We're going to go up and have a look at the station, see what there is. A bit of time until my train arrives. The coffee's nearly finished pouring out. Most of the trains are quite... They do. Just dropped that little... Just dropped that stick in the end. I was find that amusing. I know that's just me. Anyway, yeah, so most of the trains I've got are... Soviet era EMUs, DMUs, mainly EMUs. They, they look quite good fun though to ride, so I'm really looking forward to it. So this is the station, that was the ticket office just over there. I've no idea what I'm going to find when we get up here. I haven't been to have a look at the station yet, usually I do, but I spent so much time tram bashing, haven't got around to going up here to see what they got. I don't know if we're going to see any local trains, I don't know, you might see the odd freight passing through. I'm really getting excited about my first proper experience with the Latvian Railway. So there's an old EMU parked there. Uh, let's have a look out here. Problem when you've got a camera in one hand and a coffee in the other. Can't get yourself outdoors. Oh, I wonder if that's our train. That's an electric. Very Russian looking. You know where it's going? Let's watch this go. So that's just gone. There's another EMU there. And then this, well that, that one's going as well. This looks like, if this is our train, this is a Fumper. Now, if you ever travel on Fumpers, not that there's any in frontline service in the UK, but on heritage lines, in, there's one thing you have to do, and that is, you yeah, have to do, what I do just to do. That's sit in the motor car. So um, what will do, this is our train, um, covered in snow. Let's have a look, what's the number of it? DR1AM, yeah, it is AM, feels like 1AM. Um, 212916. Let's have a walk down because I think that it'd be worth travelling in the front carriage to listen to the thrash from the diesel engine. And what's it going to be like inside? Um, so, my friend's with me, he's just got on there. He's not a rail enthusiast, he could be one as well. I've got to sit in the front carriage. It's all covered in ice. It looks exciting though. I think I might have gone on one like this in Vilnius a few years ago. So this is the motor, the motor car up here. So if we're sat in here, I wonder if we'll get the thrash like you get on the UK thumper. Earlier this year, I went to the Downpatrick and County Down Railways Gala in Northern Ireland, and I sat in the thumper, the, the last remaining Northern Irish thumper. Andrew Castle. So, this is our beast to take us to Segolda. This is really exciting. Might not be a local hall train, but this is about as exciting as you can get for a non local hall train. I'm going to get inside and see what it's like. Well, we've now left the suburbs of Riga behind and we're travelling through forestry, lots of snow on the ground. It's double track all the way up to Segolda the line, so we might see the odd other train passing, although I haven't seen much. Didn't see anything interesting really as we came out of Riga. So I'm just going to sit back and enjoy the ride and look forward to exploring Segolda.
So as our train disappears off towards Estonia, it goes just over the border into Estonia. Here we are, this is Sigurda. It's a lot colder here, there's a lot more snow on the ground. This is the railway station, so let's have a look. Ooh, that's a bit exciting. There's a lava down there, a red lava. I don't think it's going anywhere because it's covered in snow. Let's go and look at that, and then we're going to go and explore the town. So, this is a really exciting town to look around. It's got castles, it's got some cable cars, which I'm looking forward to going on. I hope they're going to run in this weather. You never know, they might not, but we'll certainly go and look for them. Let's go and have a look at this lava first, though. I think then I need to go and get a hot coffee as well. There's an old water tower there, look. And here's the lava. Classic lava. How long it's been parked there for? It's on Latvian plates. So, yeah, that's a great spot. That's really made my day to find that. I'm now going to wander off that way and have a look around the town. So here we are now outside the front of the railway station. It's really cold here. It must be about minus 10. There's signs everywhere about ski, ooh, slipping a bit, ski resorts. It's yeah, very, very much a winter sports town. All these big piles of snow. I don't know what someone's done over there. Someone's actually, I'm not quite sure whether it's for if you have a toboggan, but someone's actually in this huge, huge mound of snow. Someone's carved steps into the snow. Look at this. So the, these steps won't be here. They'll melt eventually. So I'm just walking up these snow carved steps. And uh, I don't know if the idea is you're supposed to, it's like a mini ski slope. Because, yeah, look, then there's like, um, I think that's the point. You're supposed to come up with a toboggan or skis and slide down to the railway station. I don't know. I think um, I'm probably going to walk back down. And there's some quite nice looking cafes over there. I really need a coffee to warm up. I've had a nice coffee and mid-morning snack at a cafe called Mr Biscuits. I've now followed the railway line along there because I saw something from the train which made me want to go and take a closer look. So the railway line is just there behind those trees. If you follow the road through the snow, there's that building there. and It's got the Latvian flag flying and coming out of that building is something a bit unusual. Not the sort of thing you see to start with. Is it just a hotel? But look. There's rats coming out. And it goes all the way down there. It's a bobsleigh run. There's a van coming up. So we're not really in a mountainous area. Latvia doesn't have mountains. It just has the sort of weather everyone associates with mountains. So they got this bobsleigh run. It'd be great fun to see it in action, but I don't think we are today. You can see there's a huge gorge down there and there's a river. So I've been told there is cable cars here. My plan is now to follow that the road that way, the fork not follow the railway to the station but go that way along above the gorge and hopefully we shall find the cable cars there. I've just walked back right through the town centre, there's a, a, a ferris wheel there. Now I've come to an area, this isn't the cable car I was looking for, but this is where there's quite a lot of winter sports activities you can do and here there's a ski slope, there's also one of those um, bobsleigh runs. Now unfortunately it's not running today so we won't be having a go on that but we're going to go and have a look. I have to come back in the summer. Everywhere I go, I find I've got to come back to. Um, but I think the cable car I did want to do should be running. Now it takes across the gorge, which I'm going to show you properly in a minute. So we get up to here, and uh, here is a, a board showing all the activities you can do. Now, see this lady here? She's having a great time on that bobsleigh run. I'd love to do that, but it's not running. It must be because of the cold. But I think the idea is you go down on it, you come back up on the cable car. I went on one like that at Lake Bled in Slovenia in the summer. Or say cable car chair rather. As you can see, it's not running. So we're not going on that. But what we're going to do, we'll go up to where you'd go as if we were going on it. Because um, the view is pretty impressive. Look at that. That's looking down onto the gorge. So as I say, this is not mountainous at all. It's just blooming cold. Cold in a nice way. Fantastic view, and look, skiing's taking place. You've got ski so you've got the drag lifts of the skis. They're all working, but I'm not really any good at skiing. I tried snowboarding once, but it's not really my thing. But I'll be like, see that person there? Looks like they are struggling, I think. So I'm not going to go skiing. But the bobsleigh run, look, it starts there. So you're sort of sat on it like a motorbike, it's like a monorail. It goes off down there, 
and then you probably come back up on the cable car. I think what we'll do now, we'll go over there and have a look at the view that way over the valley. So, with the chairlift in the background, we're walking through the snow, it's getting a little bit deeper now, but we should get a really good view. It's like an interesting looking house over there, a mansion on the other side of the gorge. We come to here, you can see, it's like uh, people would sit here in the summer and enjoy the view. I'm probably not going to sit here, get too cold for that, but I'm certainly going to enjoy the view. And we go through here, and um, wow, there we go. See the, the road down there. I don't think this one's a ski slope, but you, you can do some really nice hiking trails around here. I'm probably going to stay on piste today. It looks amazing. I do, I do really like snow. It's cold, it, but it's bitter, but I really like it. I keep seeing this everywhere. It's, it's like the S for Sigurda. It's like the symbol of the municipality. I met a lady actually at the station. She saw me filming and she said she was from the tourism. So I said, yeah, it's, it's great here. Um, so, yeah, do come and visit Sigurda. I'm going to continue probably that way. I'm going to go and find a cable car, which I hope will take us to the other side of the gorge. I've now come a little way from where the skiing was. We get to here, look, it says Sigurda Adventures. And the cable car goes off over there. Now, it's an interesting, I've not seen one quite like this before. There's only one, usually, you know, one goes one way, one goes the other way, or you have a few of them on like a cyclic cyclic system this one there's just one pc1 cable car so i think they must every now and then send it across the gorge there it is so i've never quite seen one like this so we'll have to find out and it'll take us to so there's that that castle or mansion over there i think it'll take us to over there so i'm gonna have to go and find out if we can have a ride on it or not i hope we can though. I've got my ticket and we're getting on. This is going to be quite exciting. A ride over there across the gorge. So here we are. This is the interior of the cable car. That's not real snow. It's going to be fun. There goes the little cable car making its journey back across the valley. I was chatting to the driver on it, so there's one cable car that goes back and forth, and the driver she sits in it and takes you, she sells you the ticket, she gets in, she must go backwards and forwards all day. She told me a really nice story as to why they built this cable car 54 years ago. What happened was one gentleman lived on that side of the gorge, his girlfriend lived on this side. Now it's a walk, you can do quite a pleasant walk. I've seen steps going down, so he'd do that walk which was all well and good, but when it began to rain and it was cold at night, it wasn't so much fun. He thought, wouldn't it be nice if I could fly across like a bird? And then he built this. It's the only cable car in Latvia, she tells me. And um, it's, it's just sort of unusual and different. It's, I've never been on one where there's just one cable car. Usually there's a few of them, like I was saying, on the other side. So that's gonna make its way back. It really does drop quite a long way and climb up. I would have filmed in the cable car but they were playing music and you can get into trouble with copyright so i was unable to film in the cable car for those reasons what i'm going to do now i'm going to have a little walk around um it's very cold and there's not a lot going on she says there's a cave which is a kilometers walk away uh, i think i'm going to leave that for a, a warmer day that said if you do come here if you come here in the summer it can be quite a long queue to get on the little cable car just like it's a lookout tower i don't think we can go up there so Bear that in mind if you want to come here. It's quite good coming here at winter, you get the place yourself. There's a ruin of a castle there. She says, I was told there's three medieval castles in this area. There's this one, there's a red one, which I can see from the cable car, and there's another on, on the other side of the valley, which we'll have a look. So let's go kind of over there and we'll go and see the castle. So that's the cable car over there. You can see the castle. We're going to go and have a look at that. But look at this really cool Latvian building. It's, it's very sort of traditional what you get in this part of Northern Europe. If you have a look, you can see the, the wooden. Well, it's interesting because it, it's made of stone, clearly. And then you've got this wooden 
part here. I'm going to guess that side there is private, so I'm not actually going to go any closer. But it's such a nice building, and I love the veranda or balcony it has all along the front. What we'll do now, we'll go and look at the castle. So there's all sorts of hiking paths everywhere. It's very cold, but very pleasant to walk along. The one that goes down that way into the valley. So what I could have done, as I was saying, you can walk across the down into the gorge and up again. But because there was a cable car, I went on that. We're now going to cross this bridge and go and have a look at the castle. I can't find any information on this castle. There's no board or anything, but I'll find out something and I'll, I'll put it into the video. So let's cross this bridge. I think it's a completely wooden bridge, you just can't see the ground because of the um, stone. This is like a, I like this, it just makes it more exciting. There's not a lot to see of this castle. I think there's more to see at the other castle on the other side of the valley. So I suppose my sort of guess is that they would have been defending the valley in medieval times for whatever reason. And a bit like you get sometimes in Wales, you might get three castles all very close to each other. So some ruins up there, let's just see what's over there. As I said, there isn't a great deal to see. I expect looking across all of that would have been part of the castle once, but now it's just all stones and snow and trees. Not a lot over there. If we go up here, there's those arches over there. I want to see if we can, should see something a bit more interesting over there. It's so cold now. If I wasn't walking around, if I had to sit down, I would be freezing. It seems at this time of year there's no way to get a drink or anything on this side of the, of the river. So it's kind of like, um, well, the lady said she'll, she'll be back in half an hour. So as soon as I see that cable car coming back, I'm going to go back on it. The funny thing is it costs 16 euros to go on the cable car, which is maybe a little bit expensive, but it's definitely worth it. The train journey, a return train journey from... Uh, from Riga to here costs only four euros so it gives you an idea of the difference in prices there's a, a door down there there must be some stairs so I want to go around there see so if we can get inside let's have a look can I hmm no I'm not I'm not going down there uh, if I walk over here it's probably it's a bit dangerous it's the problem with snow you can't see where you're putting your foot is this a drift or is it a stable ground to walk on. I think this is all right. I want to see what's in this. I can just see there's a door, definite room or something. So if I can go to that, we'll go and have a look. There we are. Here's the castle. Or what's left of the castle. What I'll do, I'll do a bit of research, find out about the castle and I'll tell you about the castle now. So yeah, just a little bit of info on the castle itself. I think if I go down here, I should be able to get in. I think what it's going to be, there's just like a little staircase in the wall. So we can do that. We can get down. Let's get a, I can see other people have been down here. So go to hit. And I guess it's not that the stairs literally go to down there, but we might as well do it. So here we go. Yeah, not far. But inside we are inside the castle little window going out there you get to here and we were up there a moment ago there's another I don't know I think that's just a it's not a um, let's have a look out the window and then what I'll do I'll leave this bit here and I'll walk back to the cable car so here's a view out the window of the castle So we're back at the cable car now. I can just see it coming back across the valley. I've, I've worked out now how it works. If you have a look, you can see there's the very thick wire. That wire doesn't move. That's what the wheels of the cable car run on. The one below that is moving this way. And you can see, well, maybe you can't see, but there is one above it. If you look up there, there's a wheel. You can see the wheel is feeding it out. So it's like a big cycle of, um, like a big wire is going round and round and round. So as it goes that way, it pulls the car this way and then the other way when it goes back. So I'm gonna stand here now and wait for the cable car to arrive to take us back across the valley.
So we're back on this side, there's our cable car. There's also a lift here, so if you are in um, a wheelchair, then you can, you can ride it, so that's good to know. Now, there's another cable car, which I'm not gonna do today, but see that thing there? That, two people hang down, and they go over their own weight, and they, you can fly out across the valley. So I, I think there's only one wire. That cable car will be on the other side. So you fly out across the valley, and then the cable car pushes you back. So I think that's... Um, yeah, if I want to tick that off for haulage, I'd have to have a go on that, so that would be really fun. Anyway, we're back over here. There's a castle around the corner. I'm going to go and have a look at that now. Now, after our trip across the gorge, back on the Segalda side, just having a look now. Firstly, there's a frozen pond over there. I'm not going to walk across the ice. Here is the town's parish church. So we'll have a quick look at this, and then not far from here, is one of the castles, so we'll go and finish off up at the castle. So here we are, we're inside the church. It's a Lutheran church. The tower was built in 1929. So here we are, this is, I quite like the sort of plainness of it, but in a way the plainness is what makes it really quite nice. I do like, we've got the organ and looking down the church. There's the pulpit up there, it's quite high up. I went in an Orthodox church yesterday in Riga City Centre, but you couldn't take any pictures. So, uh, but it was it was very nice, but in a completely different way. In that it was very elaborate. This is just nice and quite plain, but I do really like it. There's the Latvian flag there. We'll just come down to here. There's something here quite interesting. Not something you've seen in the UK church, but there's a load of wood stacked up. There's this really interesting heater. Look at that. Now, I'm not sure how it works, but obviously there's a chimney there. And there's all these, um, they're pushing out heat. But there must be some sort of filter system inside. I've never seen a heater like this before, but it's really cool. So you must push out heat, but no fumes. So all the fumes go off up there. That's really different to what I've seen. Before. I think if I went to church, I'd be wanting to sit here just, just to marvel at the heater. So, yeah, I don't know anything about that. Oh, see. oh no, I, I've sussed it. I think I've sussed it. Look, down there, I reckon that they, it sucks in the cold air down there. And then it, the cold air goes round those pipes and comes out there. And then the, the fire burns inside and all the fumes go up there. That's it, because there no, there's no uh, fumes coming out. So, if I put my finger there, I can feel a tiny little draught. So that's it, I've sussed it. Anyway, I'm going to go now. I've got one more thing to do. I've got to go and find the castle. Well, having warmed up in the church by the best heater I've ever seen, I'm now back out in the cold. And as promised, we're going to go and look at the castle. We're actually going to go and look at two castles. Because in front of us here, this is the gateway to the new castle. The castle we can see from the cable car is behind it, that's the old castle. So we're going to walk into here and we'll have a look, see what we can see. Let's see if there's any information to tell us what's where. Oh yeah, that's, that's helpful, look, there's a map. So we're there. We'll walk up there, have a look at the castle. And, um, oh, the wooden manor house, that's that really nice red wooden manor house. We'll go and have a look at that. And there's also signposts. So yeah, Wooden Manor House, Newcastle, and then the Old Castle Ruins. That's what I was looking forward to see. So I suspect if you came here in the summer, this would all be really quite pleasant gardens. I'll tell you where it does remind me of where I have been to another castle in Europe is Keste in Hungary. It's got some nice gardens like that, and there's a castle. If you want to see that video, have a look at link on screen now. I've never been there in winter, though, to see it like this. So that's the Wooden Manor House. It's a bit like the one we saw on the other side of the river. That traditional wooden house, I think, is really nice. Something you see in this part of Northern Europe. And then there is the new castle. And then behind is the old castle. So we'll have a, have a wander, see what we can see. I think there is a souvenir shop and everything. And um, maybe there's a cafe and information over there. I've been told this is where the tourist headquarters for the town are. So this is... I really like how the... 
the red stands out so much in this snow. It's quite something. And oh, there's another S I S Sigurd with an exclamation mark. The old castle's over there. So what we'll do, I'm just gonna have a little wander around and then we'll go behind the new castle and see the old castle. So we're now around the back of the Newcastle in Segalda, and around here, that is the old castle. Very impressive looking. I'm very excited to go and have a look. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that in a separate video. So have a look at the link on screen now to see in Segalda Old Castle. So I'm now on my way back to the railway station. I've really enjoyed looking around Segalda. It's a very pleasant town, and it's certainly with this snow lived up to being Latvia's little Switzerland. So if you're ever in Latvia, if you're in Riga, you know, do get the train out to Sigulda. I think it'd be interesting to see this town in the summer. It'd look very different. There certainly wouldn't be massive piles of snow everywhere. And I expect, um, if we go across the road, we've got a nice little park here. Of course, that'll all be green grass. It feels hard to imagine that as green grass. It's, it's good how you can see how they've been around I keep seeing people going around clearing the, the paths. It's hard to see in the camera, but they have cleared the path to make a nice path to walk along. Yeah, so it's not like you're continually treading in snow, not knowing where you're going. So yeah, this will all be green grass. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to head back to the station now, catch my train back to Riga. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And from the beautiful Latvian town of Segalda, goodbye.